tonight on Y News. Authorities detain Senator Laila De Lima and former aide Ronnie Dayan for drug-related cases. Strict visitation policy is imposed at Senator Laila De Lima's detention cell inside the PNP Custodial Center. Former Senator Jambi Madrigal and Laguna Representative Marilyn Alonte deny Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre's allegations of bribery attempt. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources presents its mining audit report, which is now ready for review. Transport groups are set to hold a protest on Monday against the impending phase-out of old jeepney units. And a hero, hero firefighter risks his life to carry a burning gas tank away from a residential building in China. Why News begins now. From the UNTV News and Rescue Command Center, this is Why News with Angelo Castro III and Darlene Basingan. Good evening. The Montinlupa Regional Trial Court has issued a commitment order directing the detention of Senator Laila de Lima at the PNP Custodial Center in Camp Clame. But before this, the court heard the motions filed by de Lima seeking the dismissal of her drug cases. Roderick Mendoza will tell us why. Senator Laila de Lima was presented to the Muntinlupa Regional Trial Court after she was arrested for the charges filed by the DOJ for allegedly receiving millions from drug lords inside the new Bilibid prison. Muntinlupa RTC Branch 204 presiding judge Juanita Guerrero issued an order committing de Lima to the PNP Custodial Center at Camp Crame where former Senators Bong Revilla and Jingo Estrada are also detained. Her former driver bodyguard Ronnie Dayan was committed to the detention cell of Muntinlupa City Police Station. There was no information yet on the whereabouts of Dilima's other co-accused, former NBI Deputy Director and former Bucor OIC Rafael Ragos. Earlier today, the Muntinlupa courts heard the motions filed by Dilima seeking dismissal of her cases. Her lawyer questioned the issuance of the arrest warrant when they still have pending motions challenging the jurisdiction of the trial courts. We're looking at the the prematurity ng pa issue sa warrant pares habang hindi pa nare-resolve yung motion to quash. Judge Guerrero explained she needed to order the arrest of De Lima to acquire jurisdiction and act on her motion. She clarified that her determination of probable cause is only for the issuance of the arrest warrant. She directed the DOJ prosecution panel to comment on De Lima's motion to quash. Part ng due process yan na kailangan pakinggan naman natin yung kabilang panig. No? Kumingi sila, sabi ni Judge, sampung araw. Pero as much as possible, kung matanggap namin yung kanilang comment, sasagutin namin kaagad para, para naman mabigyan ng pagkakataon sa judge na ma-desisyon na na yung aming motion. Judge Amelia Fabros of Branch 205 also gave the DOJ 10 days to comment on the Lima's omnibus motion and set the next hearing on March 10. The Lima's lawyer says they are also filing a petition before the Supreme Court to question the issuance of the arrest warrant. Roderick Mendoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Muntinlupa City. The Philippine National Police assures the security of Senator Laila de Lima on her detention at the PNP Custodial Center. Grace Cassin, tell us why. After the booking process in Camp Clame this morning, authorities brought Senator de Lima to the Muntindupo RTC to return the warrant. It was also at this point when the court decided to order the detention of the senator at the PNP Custodial Center. PNP spokesperson, Police Senior Superintendent Leonardo Carlos, says they are still determining as to whether De Lima will use the detention cell of former Senator Juan Ponce and Rile or that of the Tiemzon couple. Gadgets such as cell phones and laptops are not allowed inside the detention cell. Strict visiting hours of families and friends will also be imposed. 
Even famous personalities wish to visit the senator still have to seek clearance from PNP chief. Before 5 o'clock this afternoon, Senator Dilema's son, brother, relatives, Senator Antonio Trillanes IV and former CHR chairperson Edna Rosales came to visit the senator. However, Rosales was not in the list, so she was not able to go inside. According to Trillanes, Senator Dilema says she will continue her advocacy even inside the detention cell. Trillanes assures that she will personally make effort to give justice to Senator Dilema. Plano nga nila pagunahin eh, di ba? Pero sige, bring it on. Do your worst. Dahil hahabulin ko to si President Duterte. The moment mawala na siya sa poder ng kapangyarihan, ipapakulong kita, hahabulin kita. PNP assures that the number of assigned policemen in the area is enough to secure the facility. We will make sure that she's safe and secure in while on our custody. As of now, Dinagat Representative Kakabag Ao says the senator's condition in her detention cell is okay. Parang kinukenta niya, sabi niya, sobrang far out na in-stretch talaga too much to even if you drugs, mga ganyan ba? Parang, uh, so, she, she's very uh, well versed about her case and her situation. So, well, masaya naman. Masaya siyang nagpaalam ako na is na ako. Parang hindi naman... Hindi ko naman siya nakitaan ng emosyon na kakaiba. Grace Kasten, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krame. Ronnie Dayan, the former driver and bodyguard of Senator Laila Dilima, is now detained at the Muntinlupa City Police Office. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. At around 7 last night, the Mundinlupa Regional Trial Court, Branch 204, released an arrest warrant against Ronnie Dayan, the former driver and bodyguard of Senator Leila de Lima. The order was in relation to his alleged involvement in the illegal drug trade at the new Bilibid prison. The Orbis Tundo police arrested Dayan at his house at Barangay Galarin and was afterwards immediately brought to the municipal station. Hindi naman siya at sabi pa nga niya, uh, in expected na niya yun. Kasi mga before 5 ata or after 4 na flash na sa TV na na-issuean siya ng warrant. So expected na niya na anytime darating yung warrant of arrest but may aaristo sa kanya. Dayan went through the usual booking, mag shots, and fingerprinting processes. Although his family already accepted his fate, they still could not help becoming emotional after his arrest. At 5 this morning, the convoy of Dayan and his family with the members of the CIDG left Urbis Tundo, Pangasinan for Muntinlupa City for the return of the arrest warrant process at the Muntinlupa RTC. At 12 in the afternoon, the Muntinlupa RTC released a commitment order to detain Dayan at the Muntinlupa City Police Station. Dayan will be detained inside the 10 square meter jail cell separate from other prisoners. Back to holding area yon until we further evaluate kung kailangan siyang isama doon sa other uh, inmates. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact na nandito yun, kung ano yung regular uh, uh, procedure natin sa other retainers, eh ganun din i-apply natin sa kanila. Um, Papayag siya doon na lang sa DGMP San Carlos. Sa Pangasinan? Yes ma'am, at least malapit yung pamilya ko doon. Kaso wala yata yung jurisdiction doon. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Senator Laila Dilima believes that her arrest is a Duterte administration strategy to silence the critics of the government's anti-drug campaign. In a recorded message posted on social media, the lady senator says the government has made her an example in an effort to destroy its critics. Clearly, this administration has evil and dangerous plans. To make an example of me, to intimidate, silence, and destroy anyone who dares challenge them. To draw public attention away from the government's abuses and failures. And to cover up their most murderous war on drugs. Lilima argued that that was her, or that what was done to her is a form of retaliation by the government for her continued investigation of the Davao Death Squad ever since she was the head of the Commission on Human Rights. 
Meanwhile, the Lima's camp is determined to question before the Supreme Court the issuance of the arrest warrant by the Muntinlupa Regional Trial Court, which he believes is a grave abuse of discretion. Malacanang says that the arrest of Senator Laila de Lima is an opportunity for her to defend herself against allegations. Rosalie Cos will tell us why. The Malacanang assures that Senator Leila de Lima will be treated with fairness and accorded due process for her to defend herself against allegations of her involvement in illegal drug trade operations. In a statement, Presidential Spokesperson Undersecretary Ernesto Abella says after the court acted on the cases and ordered her arrest, the Senator now has the opportunity to defend herself and prove her innocence. Chief Presidential Legal Counsel Attorney Salvador Salvador Panelo says the Duterte administration is enforcing the rule of law. Attorney Panelo also denied allegations of the opposition that the arrest of Senator De Lima is a political harassment and that the Malacanang pressured the Muntinlupa Regional Trial Court. Malacanang also leaves it to the court to act on the cases and encourages the public to keep faith on the judicial system. In line with this, the government says Senator De Lima has nothing to fear about her security in her detention cell as PNP Chief Director General Ronald De La Rosa himself assures of her safety inside the PNP Custodial Center in Camp Crame. Even Interior and Local Government Secretary Ismael Sueno has given his clear instruction to the PNP to ensure the safety and security of the lady senator. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang. The Liberal Party is ready to assist Senator Laila de Lima in exhausting all possible legal remedies in her drug cases. Joyce Balancho will tell us why. The Liberal Party or LP will continue to show its support to Senator Laila de Lima as she faces her cases in relation to the illegal drug trade in the New Belibid prisons. According to LP President Senator Francis Pagilinan, the Muntinlupa Regional Trial Court erred in issuing a warrant of arrest because it has no jurisdiction over de Lima's cases and there was no sufficient evidence on the complaint. Even former President Benigno Aquino III has expressed concern over Senator de Lima's safety after being arrested. Well, nagkausap kami kanina umaga. Uh, Siyempre, concerned din siya sa kaligtasan ng ating uh, ni Senator uh, Laila. Nag-aalala siya, syempre. Uh, dahil ang sa kanya, eh, uh, kinikwestiyon din niya. No? Uh, bakit ganito ang uh, uh, naging uh, resulta ng korte na na-issue yung warrant? Vice President Lenny Robredo says, Dilima's arrest is a clear case of political harassment. She also urges the public to be vigilant on the administration's tendencies to abuse the criminal justice system to silence the critics of the president. Senator Risa Honteveros, on the other hand, says this is a proof that the country is going back to authoritarian rule. This highlights the slow death of democracy and rule of law, according to her. Senator Bam Aquino laments how the administration railroaded the rules and processes just for the purpose of political vendetta. Another staunch critic of the president, Senator Antonio Trillanes IV, believes this sends a message on what can happen to the critics of the administration. He says because of this, he is even more motivated to expose the true character of the president. Meanwhile, Senator Pangilinan assures De Lima that the Liberal Party will assist her in all possible legal remedies as they believe this is persecution by those who have acts to grind against her. Senator Laila, hindi tulad ng ibang uh, high-profile na mga uh, sabihin na nating accused dahil marami siyang pinakulong, maraming uh, galit. 
uh, at nais maghiganti kung maaari. Kaya yung kanyang seguridad at yung kaligtasan niya eh pangunahing concern. Before surrendering to arresting authorities, Delima faced the Senate media earlier and maintained her innocence. She said, truth will prevail in the end. Kung sa tingin po nila ay mapapatahimik po nila ako, kung sa, sa tingin po nila ay hindi na po ako lalaban dun sa mga pinaglalaban ko, lalo na sa katotohanan, sa katarungan, laban sa mga araw-araw na pagpatay at mga iba pa na mga panggigipit, paniniil nitong Regimen Duterte. Karangalan ko po na ako ay makulong dahil sa mga pinaglalaban ko po. Ipagdasal nyo lang po ako. Joyce Balancho, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. Vice President Lenny Robredo attended a forum in the University of the Philippines that aims to commemorate the People Power Revolution. In her speech, the Vice President questioned what she calls as the rush arrest of Senator Laila Dilima. Nel Maribuhok is in Quezon City to tell us why, live. Yes, Nel, go ahead. Darlene Vice President Lenny Robredo this afternoon expressed her support to Senator Laila de Lima who is now detained at the PNP Stojal Center in Camp Crame in her speech during a program at the University of the Philippines to commemorate the People Power Revolution the chairperson of the Liberal Party questioned the rush arrest of her party mate Senator Was she to be taken under cover of darkness and to what end and why the rush we do not know the brave senator who dared begin a probe on the president's drug war prepared herself and said she will continue the fight. So this morning, the nation woke up to a worrying scene. A senator and a staunch critic of the president was escorted into police custody. The message was loud and clear. Anyone who dares speak, dissent is not safe. The Vice President also calls on President Rodrigo Duterte to focus on other problems of the country such as poverty and unemployment instead of focusing on war on drugs. Vipi Robredo with the Liberal Party officials and former lawmakers like former Congressman Erin Tanyada and Neil Tupas attended the forum to commemorate the EDSA People Power Revolution. Darlene? Thank you, Nell. And that's Nell Maribuhok reporting live from Quezon City. Binyan City Representative Marilyn Len Alonte Nagyat denies the accusations of Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre that she offered 100 million pesos to high-profile inmates to retract their statement in favor of Senator Laila de Lima. Rosalie Cos will tell us why. Congresswoman Marlene Alonte of Laguna was quick to deny the allegations of Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre II that she was among those who offered 100 million peso bribe to high-profile inmates in exchange for reversing their statement in favor of Senator Leila de Lima. She says she will never participate in any wrongful act. Alonte says she is puzzled as to how and why she was implicated in the controversy when she is not close to Senator De Lima and Madrigal. I categorically deny the insinuations about my involvement in the so-called bribe or offer to believed inmates to recant their testimonies against Senator Laila De Lima. I have no knowledge of the said acts. Aside from Alonte, Aguirre also pointed to former Senator Jambi Madrigal as those behind the bribery attempt. Aguirre says Jambi Madrigal is the cousin of a certain Lalaine Madrigal Martinez who told him about the attempted bribery. Lalaine is the wife of one of the inmates inside the AFP Custodial Center. Congresswoman Alonte stresses that she is not close to the Lima and former Senator Madrigal. Siguro nga ho, baka ho tama yung kanilang intel na may nangyaring ganung tawagan, pero sinisigurado ko ho sa inyo, hindi ho ako yun. Sana man lang nag-imbestiga, nag-double check po sila. Alonte was a member of the Liberal Party during the last elections, but she shifted to the PDP Laban when President Rodrigo Duterte won the presidential race. Meanwhile, Madrigal said in a statement that Secretary Aguirre's allegations are baseless, malicious, and are outright lies. She also denied knowing Lalaine Madrigal Martinez, who is believed to be the wife of convicted kidnapper and drug lord Noel Martinez. Madrigal is currently out of the country. 
Ross Alicoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Next on Y News. The Commission on Higher Education clarifies exemption from the issued moratorium suspending educational tours in colleges and universities. And some transport groups are set to hold a protest on Monday against the impending phase-out of old jeepney units. Y News will be right back. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources has presented today the documents containing the result of the mining audit conducted by the agency, which are now ready for review. Ray Pelayo will tell us why. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources has presented today the bulk of documents containing the department's mining audit report. From these documents, Secretary Gina Lopez based her decisions in closing 23 mining operations and suspending five others. Four of the violations listed is that most of the mines are located near watersheds, which also prompted the department to cancel the 75 mineral production sharing agreement even before they operate. Five teams from the Mineral Industry Coordinating Council, or MICC, will be reviewing the documents in three months' time starting in March. Yusek Ipat Luna says it is to prove that they are transparent when it comes to their auditing. Nakakainis lang kasi yung hindi daw transparent. No? Eh, ang hirap-hirap kasi ibigay sa inyo na ang transparency kapag ganyang kabuluminus yung documents. Meanwhile, DNR also issued a show cause order to the 22 mining operations for violation of RA 7942 on the implementation of final rehabilitation and decommissioning fund. The funds were supposed to be used in developing the mined areas. Secretary Gina Lopez stands in her decisions which she claims as constitutional and most especially that she is supported by President Rodrigo Duterte. He said, I, I agree with you. And he said, don't worry, you're my cabinet secretary and I and din ako na hindi dapat imina yung watershed. Frey Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Department of Agrarian Reform orders the inclusion of more than 700 hectares of land inside the Hacienda Luisita into the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program. Nel Marie Bohok will tell us why. The Department of Agrarian Reform, or DAR, has not approved the request of the Hacienda Luisita, or HLI Incorporated, to extend the deadline for the development works in its 374 hectares of land. This after the HLI failed to conduct a land conversion order within the set deadline. Dalawampung taon pong na nakabinbin, wala pong nagawang aktibidades sa mga lupain po kinonvert. Kaya ayaw po sa batas, ito po ay automatic. Uh, coverage po ang mangyayari. This prompted DAR Secretary Rafael Mariano to include the property to the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program or CARP. Directing the provincial and municipal agrarian reform officers concerned to immediately place under the coverage of the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program pursuant to existing laws, rules and regulations Starting today, the said agrarian reform program will cover the 727 hectares Hacienda Luisita, including the 353 hectares of land owned by the Tarlac Development Corporation or Tadeco. This means that beneficiaries of the said program can possibly benefit from the Hacienda Luisita. Kami din dapat ang maging beneficiaryo niyang 374 kasi bahagi yan ng kabuang 4,915.75 hectares na sinaklaw ng stock distribution plan. DAR also noted that it has the authority to cancel or revoke any land conversion deal if it fails to follow the provisions of the law. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Commission on Higher Education or CHED today issues a clarification on its moratorium on field trips. CHED also cites some of the exemptions from the suspension of off-campus tours. According to CHED, international and local internships that are referred to as on-the-job training programs, practicum, field instruction, field study, uh, shipboard training as well as international education tours are not covered by the moratorium. Senator 
Gregorio Honasan appeals for the depoliticization of the EDSA People Power Revolution. The plea came after the commemoration of the bloodless revolt held inside Camp Aguinaldo today instead of the traditional celebration at the EDSA People Power Monument. Robbie de Guzman will tell us why. The celebration of the 31st anniversary of the EDSA People Power One this year has been simple yet meaningful, according to the military. The event was attended by former President Fidel V. Ramos, former Senator Juan Ponce Enrile, Senator Gringo Onasan, and former Vice President Jejumar Binay, who are considered as the key players of the so-called bloodless revolution. Although President Rodrigo Duterte did not attend the event at Camp Aguinaldo, Executive Secretary Salvador Dormia de Aldea gave a message on behalf of the chief executive. Elsa lives on and its spirit should continue to inspire heroism in all of us for the greater glory of God and country. Senator Nasan says the simple celebration of the EDSA people power this year should not be an issue since it doesn't mean that the true spirit of EDSA is being abandoned. <laughs> ating Pangulo, kapag sinabi ko po, harapin na natin yung mga tunay na problema. Huwag tayo masyadong magpabad sa politika, lalo na hahati-hati yung bayan natin. For ENSA Foundation co-founder and political strategist Pastor Boy Saikon, remembering the ENSA people power does not depend on how extravagant its celebration is. The spirit is still there. No matter how simple the celebration is, no, we should not belittle it. Uh, hindi naman sa laki ng pera o garbo ng paghahanda. No? A wreath laying and flag racing ceremony led by former President Ramos will be held at the People Power Monument tomorrow. Groups opposing extrajudicial killings, death penalty, the Marcus Perio, and the martial law will also conduct a protest concurrent with the celebration tomorrow. Duterte supporters will also hold a gathering at the Carina Grandstand and other parts of the country tomorrow and on Sunday. Robbie de Guzman. UN TV News and Rescue, Philippines. President Rodrigo Duterte facilitates the relaunch of the Bangsamoro Transition Commission who will craft the enabling law of the Comprehensive Agreement on the Bangsamoro. The new chairman of the commission is confident that a Bangsamoro basic law, which is beneficial to all, will be passed under the Duterte administration. Victor Cosare will tell us why. Members of the expanded Bangsamoro Transition Commission were introduced to the public today. From an original 15-member committee, it is now composed of 21 members with its new chairman, MILF Vice Chairman for Political Affairs, Ghazali Jafar. The expanded membership aims to promote wider participation of stakeholders in the crafting of a new draft law that will implement the comprehensive agreement on the Bangsamoro. Members of the Moro National Liberation Front form part of the commission. To our fellow brothers from the MNLF, let us close ranks and find strength in the convergence of the peace agreement. Presidential advisor in the peace process, Secretary Jesus Dureza, and MILF Chairman Alhaj Murad Ibrahim say the losses of the previous proposed Bangsamoro Basic Law will be put into consideration and addressed so the new BBL will be able to pass Congress and even the legal challenge it may face in the Supreme Court. Dureza says under the new administration, there is a big chance of the proposed legislation to pass into a law since the leaders of both houses of Congress and the President himself is from Mindanao. Now. If we lose this opportunity, fellow Mindanaoans and fellow Filipinos, then it will, I think, be forever lost. There is no other moment in history now that we have to strike this opportunity that we have. Uh, malaki ang chance, malaki ang pag-asa natin. May pasa ito uh, bilang batas sapagkat ang Pangulo natin ay eh, uh, sa tingin natin ay eh, very serious at uh, sincere para may pasa ito. 
President Rodrigo Duterte for his part stresses that he will comply with his campaign promise that is to solve the problem in Mindanao. He says he is in a hurry to avoid extremism entering the Philippines that will eventually destroy the country. The president stresses the Moro people will have it under his watch. So I am urging the BTC to navigate the hindrances and obstructions at hanapin ninyo ang daan hanggang patungo ng kapayapaan. Mahirap yan. It will be a long journey. I leave it up to you. You know the history. You know the equation here. You know the composition of the population. You know the religions here. You know the idiosyncrasies of the tribes. Magkaiba-iba yan. The president says once a proposal that is acceptable to all is passed, he will personally campaign to all Filipinos to vote for it. Victor Cosare, UNTV News and Rescue, Davao City. President Rodrigo Duterte has spearheaded headed a turnover of the rehabilitation facility for drug reformists at Sitio Maag, Pena Plata, Island Garden City of Samal. The community-based drug rehabilitation facility was the first amongst the 15 committed buildings by the Federation of Filipino Chinese Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Inc. In return, the local government of the island expressed its gratitude for the project which will serve as a shelter to drug dependents who wish to be reformed from illegal drug use. Medical practitioners are now exempted on the number coding scheme by the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA provided that they are recognized by their affiliated hospitals according to MMDA General Manager Thomas Orbos. They will no longer accept individual applications from medical doctors but instead the hospital management shall submit a list of those doctors who need exemption due to the nature of their jobs. The yeah, MMDA also clarifies that only one vehicle per doctor will be allowed exemption. They're all exempt, exempted, but they need to provide a certification. We will not be talking anymore to the do individual doctors, but to the hospitals. So, dapat the hospitals ang magsabi kung talagang emergency doctor yung, yung ano na yun, yung... Pag-provide po na Oo, hindi na kami. The Transport Group Piston as well as the Stop and Go Coalitions set to stage a nationwide transport strike on Monday, February 27. John Anna will tell us why. More than 100 jeepney drivers and operators gathered in Intramuros, Manila earlier today in preparation for another nationwide transport strike on Monday, February 27, to protest against the jeepney phase-out and modernization program. Metro Manila and provincial jeepneys such as in Rizal, Bulacan, Laguna and Cavite will join the transport strike. Portions of Visayas and Mindanao region will also be covered by the said strike. According to the group, the said government project is clearly an anti-poor program and a big number of drivers will lose their jobs once this is implemented. The modernization of passenger jeepneys may also result in another fare increase. Binibigay itong jeepney sa amay na malalaking korporasyon at inaagawan kami na kabuhayan yung mga malilit na operator. Because of this, the group advises all schools and public offices to cancel classes and office schedule on Monday. This is to prevent thousands of commuters from being stranded. Last February 6, the Stop and Go Coalition staged a transport strike that paralyzed transportation in some portions of Metro Manila. It can be recalled that the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board has warned a possible cancellation or suspension of franchise of those drivers who will join the transport strike. As of now, the LTA the FRB is currently coordinating with other government agencies to provide assistance to all jeepney operators and drivers affected by this modernization program. Palagi ko kami nagmimit. No? Ang ibig ko sabihin ganito, government has gone out of its way to come up with a program to help them modernize the unit. Meeting precisely to address the issue of having to help 
no? Grant assistance to the uh, to the small PUJ operators who will be affected by this uh, modernization program. According to Piston, around 80% of jeepney drivers and operators in Metro Manila and 70,000 jeepney units from the group Stop and Go Coalition will join the transport strike on Monday. The group also said they will conduct a transport strike every month until the LTFRB listens to their grievances. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Motorists can now expect east traffic flow along Zapote Road in Las Piñas City. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. The second phase of the Zapote River Drive officially opens today. It serves as an alternate route for motorists avoiding heavy traffic along thoroughfares in Las Piñas City. The Zapote River Drive connects to the BF Resort Village in Barangay Pamplona 1 to Pegasus Street in Moonwalk Village, Barangay Talon 5. This river drive is parallel to Zapote Alabang Road. So yung mga private vehicles, instead na makagulo sila sa Zapote Alabang Road, dito na sila dadaan. In July, the alternate route might be extended from Zapote River Drive to Marcos Alvarez Avenue. The extension is expected to reach the Anghari Road in time for the 4th Zapote River Festival in 2018. Last year, the first phase of the Zapote River Drive was opened on Margie Moran Street in BF Resort Village. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The Office of the Civil Defense dismisses rumors that a strong quake is due to hit Davao City and time between February 24 to March 8. Victor Cosare will tell us why. After a magnitude 4.7 quake hit Davao City yesterday, and information is now circulating in social media sites warning Davaoenos of a strong quake that may hit the city anytime between today until March 8. The message states that the movement of the Sorigao Tomati Fault will trigger a quake with a magnitude of 7 or more. However, the Office of the Civil Defense says the information is not true. Wala po tayong available na equipment na, na pwedeng magamit para ma-predict kung kailan tatama yung, yung nasabing earthquake. The OCD strongly suggests that the public should only rely from legitimate sources like the Philippine Volcanology and Seismology or FIVOX when it comes to earthquakes. The agency also appeals to the public not to share any unverified information so as not to cause panic or confusion. But the OCD advises everyone to be ready because we could never tell when a strong quake may happen. History also tells us that in 1924, the Davao region was hit with an 8.3 magnitude quake following the movement of the Surigao Tomati Fault. As a matter of precaution, the OCD advises the public to be knowledgeable of what to do when an earthquake hits. Uh, know the basic procedures, uh, Duck cover and hold technique sa earthquake and evacuation drills na ginagawa natin. It is also wise to prepare a survival kit in our homes that could last for three days. And yung mga pwedeng laman nung sinatawag natin na emergency kit is yung uh, tubig, no? uh, extra gamot, yung mga uh, gamot sa sipon, ubo, kung sakasakali, and uh, yung mga extra cloth, no? uh, mga damit, extra, extra damit. Uh, pagkain, tubig, uh, flashlight, battery-operated radios, and uh, yung mga important documents. Victor Cosare, UNTV News and Rescue, Davao City. Coming up, the World Health Organization reports depression as among the highest contributor to global disability and suicide deaths. And a hero firefighter risks his life to carry a burning gas tank away from a residential building in China. More from Y News after this break. Ben Ainsley and crew put Land Rover Bar Yacht through its paces on America's Cup waters in Bermuda. Jovic Bermas will tell us why. As they bid to become Great Britain's first ever America's Cup winners, the Land Rover Bar, led by their skipper Ben Ainsley, have put their boat through its paces in Bermuda. 
often appearing to float across the waves, the matte black boat codenamed R1 but christened Rita. The name of all of Inslee's previous boats is an impressive spectacle. With around three months to go until the start of the 2017 edition of the America's Cup, the Land Rover Bar team will now be focusing on their intensive training program with a new boat. Ainsley has won four Olympic gold medals as well as eight sailing world championship golds and he was part of the Oracle Team USA that won the 2013 America's Cup. However, now Ainsley has his heart set on bringing home glory for Britain. Yeah, it's a massive day for the team to get our race boat out on the water sailing uh, for the first time and you know there's been some massive upgrades, a uh, huge amount of uh, work, effort, time's gone in from the designers, engineers, shore crew and the boat builders so as always with these campaigns huge credit to those guys for getting us out there and it was a really really promising sail. I think we can uh, you know, see a lot of the upgrades coming together and um, increasing our performance markedly, which is where we need to be. So, good day for the team. Oracle Team USA won the last America's Cup in San Francisco. Jovic Burmas, UNTV News and Rescue, London, United Kingdom. Firefighter is hailed a hero during a fire incident in China. Dulce Alarcon will tell us why. A firefighter was hailed as a hero by the local residents after risking his own life to rush a burning gas tank out of a residential building in Xiangyang, central China's Hubei province on Wednesday. According to the homeowner, the fire was caused by a gas tank which had caught on fire. Firefighters reached the site and found the valve of the gas tank was broken and could not be turned off. They immediately decided to transfer it to a safer place in case the gas tank blew up. Firefighter Wan Wen Tao then picked up the burning gas tank and ran out of the building to an open space. Firefighters cooled the burning gas tank and extinguished the fire in about 10 minutes. <laughs> One said he was very nervous and the flaming tank scalded him, but the only idea in his mind was to move the gas tank to a safer place. Local residents who witnessed the scene were impressed by one's heroism. Authorities believe the fire started whilst the homeowner was cooking dinner. Dulce Alarcon, UNTV News and Rescue, Shanghai, China. The World Health Organization, or WHO, reports that over 300 million people suffered depression in 2015. Marge Pelayo will tell us why. A new World Health Organization report says more than 300 million people worldwide live with depression, representing an 18% increase between 2005 and 2015. WHO says the illness affects people of all ages from all walks of life in all countries and ranks as the largest single contributor to global disability. Dr. Chan Chilsom of WHO's mental health department says depression is a very stigmatized condition and as such is very under-recognized and under-treated. He says treatment gaps are particularly large in lower-income countries. Chilsom adds that depression contributed some 7.5% of all years lived with disability globally and is a leading contributor to suicide deaths. Depression is a very common disorder uh, affecting over 300 million people globally. Uh, it's a very stigmatized condition um, and uh, partly as a result of that, uh, it's very under-recognized uh, uh, and under-treated. There is a huge treatment gap in uh, the lower income countries in the world. It's uh, more than 90% uh, of people in, who could benefit by, from treatment do not get it. WHO recommends both psychosocial and pharmacological treatments of depression, but Chilsom stresses that antidepressant medications should not be used in children and only in very particular circumstances in adolescents. 
Talking actually is the first point uh, in the road towards recovery and that um, this, this talking but can and occur both between um, uh, individuals with the condition and people who they, uh, they trust um, as a means of uh, recognizing their, their problems. March Belayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. A one-year-old boy undergoes treatment through the help of UNTV and its partners in public service. Leslie Lombowen tells us why. Club foot is a congenital deformity of the foot and ankle. According to the National Institute of Health, one out of 1,000 children is born with club foot. Among those with this condition is one-year-old Kyle Gerson de la Cruz. He can hardly stand, that's why he still can't walk. Because of financial incapacity, baby Kyle's parents cannot bring him to a specialist. Kyle's mother, Christelle, says her husband only earns 1,000 pesos every week from his job in a steel factory. That's why she decided to seek the assistance of UNTV. The station and its partners in public service immediately responded to Christelle's request. Through the help of Mabuhay Deseret Foundation, baby Kyle undergoes Ponseri method for club foot correction. Apart from treatment, baby Kyle and his family also received other assistances. Little Lamb's Kids Spa sponsored infant massage, body scrub, and other services for Kyle. The family also received financial assistance from PowerNap Marketing Corporation. In addition, Pinoy Food Fusion Network Franchising Corporation gave grocery items and baby products. Una po, nagpapasalamat ang Little Lambs na nabigyan po kami ng pagkakataon na may ibahagi kay, kay Kyle ang infant massage para po siya ay marilax bago po siya operahan. Kami po ay nagpapasalamat po sa UNTV at sa servisyong kasambahay po. At kami po ay nabigyan po ng oportunidad na makapagbigay po ng muntin tulong po kay Kyle po. Kami po sa Power Nap Marketing Corporation at Pinoy Food Fusion Network Franchising Corporation, yung dalawang company po yan, nagpapasalamat po sa inyo at binigyan niyo po kami ng oportunidad na makapag-share ng aming blessings. Meanwhile, Christelle has expressed her gratitude for the aid she received from the station and its partners in public service. Nung una po, maraming maraming salamat po sa UNTV at saka po sa uh, servisyong kasambahay at sa Mabuhay Deseret Foundation po at sa marami pa pong tumulong at tutulong sa anak ko. Salamat. Leslie Longbowen for Servisyong Kasangbahay. The Penguins Flyers match at the NHL will be played outdoors on Saturday night. Meanwhile, Mercedes has a new baby. Aaron Romero will tell us why. In the Formula One series, drivers Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas unveiled the new Mercedes F1 2017 car, the FW08 on the track at Silverstone. Britain's Hamilton, world champion in 2014 and 2015, is favorite to top the series again. Mercedes is still the team to beat after winning the Constructors' Championship three years running. This year's new regulations mean the cars are completely changed from last year's and they will be faster with wider tires allowing them to corner quicker too. In cycling, Team Dimension Data's Mark Cavendish wins the opening stage of the 2017 Abu Dhabi Tour in a bunch sprint and takes the lead in the general classification. On the podium, the Max Man was rewarded with the race leader's red jersey and also the points leader's green jersey. I was put in the best position and they were incredible. Meanwhile, a hockey rink built in Heinz Field is anticipated to attract thousands of fans for a National Hockey League game to be played by the Pittsburgh Penguins and the cross-state rival Philadelphia Flyers amid local warm temperatures. Saturday's contest between the defending Stanley Cup champion Penguins and the visiting Flyers is part of the NHL Stadium series of games played on rinks constructed in outdoor NFL and MLB stadiums since 2014. The NHL says they've seen these sports of temperatures for outdoor games before. We've been in California for two games. You know, Colorado was a warm day, so you know we're prepared for. Aaron Romero. 
UNTV News and Rescue, New York. With her big brown eyes, long eyelashes, and glossy black coat, find the cow looks like a star. Nina Armilio will tell us why. Six-year-old Breton Pinois, find the cow, is off to Paris to be the face of the annual international farm show, a staple in the French agricultural calendar and fertile terrain for candidates looking to seduce the rural vote in election year. French President François Hollande will officially open the farm show on Saturday, February 25th, posing for photographers with fine, and the candidates to replace him as president are also expected to visit. For Brian, it's an opportunity to showcase not only the rare breed, France's smallest dairy cow, but also the approach to agriculture adopted by him and his two colleagues. Ce qui l'aboutissement pour nous, euh, c'est une forme de fierté quelque part, de montrer que sauvegarder la biodiversité, d'en vivre, euh, d'en faire de l'élevage et d'être un petit peu fier de son métier, eh ben, euh, fine, elle représente aussi tout ça. Donc euh, c'est ça qui nous rend un petit peu fiers du travail accompli. The organic farm produces its own cheese, butter, and other dairy products, selling them directly to local consumers as well as through a network in the nearby city of Knott. Locals say they are proud of their heroine, who is listed first in the notable residence section of Blissey's Wikipedia page. Évidemment, ça n'arrive comme disent même les propriétaires de Fine, ça n'arrive qu'une fois dans sa vie, et ça n'arrivera qu'une fois dans la vie de notre commune d'avoir une star comme ça, un mondial peut-être pas, mais le salon international de Paris c'est quand même pas anodin. Lebeau plans to visit Fine at the show to stop her feeling homesick. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Those are the reasons behind the news, February 24, 2017. I'm Angelo Castro III. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I'm Darlene Basingan. Because we need to know. We will always ask why. Thank you for watching. Why News?